This is the Red Komodo, and this is the Zcam E2S6G. Both of these cameras can record in 6K. Both of them have super 35 size sensors tucked inside their compact cube-shaped bodies, and both of them can record in RAW. The Komodo, of course, has Red Code RAW, and the Zcam can record in ProRes RAW when combined with the Atomos Ninja 5. The Komodo is Red's first affordable cinema camera. Affordable is a relative term, and in this case it means it's under $10,000. And in fact, it's only $6,000 before accessories like media, batteries, and a monitor. The Zcam E2 S6G also comes in at $6,000, body only. The Komodo has a Canon RF mount, the Zcam has an interchangeable mount, and this version has a locking Canon EF mount. Both cameras can record to CFAS 2.0 media, with the Komodo recording in ProRes or Red Code internally, and the Zcam in ProRes, ZRAW, or H.264-5 internally. You have to record externally to the Atomos Ninja 5 for ProRes RAW. The Komodo has two built-in battery slots in the back designed for Canon BP batteries. These are the release buttons. The Zcam has a single Sony MPF slot on the back. The Zcam shares the same body design as the other E2 flagship cameras. It has a small screen on the top, which is mostly only good for the menu, but can display the image except when recording at high frame rates. Next to it is the record button. There's a quarter 20 mounting point here with locating holes, and across the bottom are the menu buttons, which can also be customized. There are customizable function buttons and the CFAST card slot on the left hand side. It has this floppy rubber door, which everybody kind of complains about, and there's three more quarter 20 mounting points on this side. Turning the camera around to the other side, we have the mic and headphone jack, and also some more quarter 20 mounting points. The bottom has two quarter 20 mounting points, and there are two built in microphones on the front. The EF and PL mounts from Zcam also accept an electronic ND filter, which is one of my favorite features. It allows for 1.7 to 6.7 stops of ND, which is great. You can control it in the camera or using something like the port keys key grip. You do have to remove it and replace it with the clear filter to get no stops, but it sure beats having screw on filters on the front. Before I go any further, I want to give a shout out and a huge thanks to Soltis Cameras. The owner sent me this E2 S6G for review, as well as the new Zcam EVF, which I'll be reviewing in a separate video. If you're thinking about buying any Zcam product or have any kind of questions, definitely visit SoltisCameras.com. They are an authorized Zcam dealer with the cameras and accessories in stock, and they can even perform some repairs. This video isn't sponsored. They have just been really great, and I want to give them some attention. All right, back to the video. The Komodo's body is slightly larger than the Zcam, but the Zcam is slightly longer in one dimension. They weigh about the same. The Komodo has a larger touchscreen on the top and menu control buttons next to it. It doesn't have any customizable function buttons, but it does have a mic and headphone jack. These are M4 mounting points. Turning it around, we see a Wi-Fi antenna, the power switch, and the record button. These are cooling fans. I personally think the record button should be on the operator side of the camera. It's hard to reach here. There are also two M4 mounting points here. The bottom has these two mounting points, but you'd pretty much have to rely on a manufacturer to make a plate for it since they're spaced really close together. And on the front we have these two tiny holes for the microphones, just like the Zcam. The Zcam has a single HDMI port for video output, including ProRes RAW output. There's a two-channel audio input, auxiliary power output, LANC connector, Wi-Fi and Ethernet, USB-C for connecting SSDs, and the Limo power connector. The Komodo has an extension port on the back for camera control, timecode, genlock, and other professional connectivity. It has a single SDI connector for video output and a two-pin Limo power connector. The Komodo uses Canon BP955 and 975 batteries. This is the 955 size. They have an LED battery level on them, which is nice. The Zcam cameras use these NPF style batteries. You can see that they come in many different sizes. This one has a battery meter and a DC barrel connector, whereas these other ones don't. The biggest difference between these batteries is the price. The Canon 955 cost me $160. The NPF batteries are all under $35 each. There are some other BP mount batteries coming very soon from companies like Blue Shape and Jupio for less than the Canon, and Red themselves are now making a BP style battery, albeit at $170.
One other benefit of these Canon batteries is that they communicate their power to the camera, so the camera can give you a percentage of battery life, whereas the Z-Cam you have to rely on voltage only. It doesn't know how much power your batteries have. When I set out to compare cameras like this, I have to make decisions about which lenses to use, what kinds of shots would be useful for comparison, and which other cameras should I include. As far as lenses, I own two of these Canon FD 35mm tilt shift lenses, and I have access to a third one which belongs to my father. Two of them have been modified for EF mount, the third was easily adapted to RF mount, so none of them are being used with additional optics which can affect the image quality. These are the same lenses that I used in my first camera comparison video back in 2018, and in most of my subsequent comparison videos. I don't use these lenses because they're particularly good lenses. They're not bad lenses, but they certainly don't stand up to today's modern lenses. They're not as sharp, they only go down to f2.8, and they have some chromatic aberration, which you'll see in the footage. I use them because I already own them, and it's convenient to shoot with these lenses. They are manual focus, so there's no concern for electronics trying to do something without me knowing, like auto-focusing or changing the aperture, nothing like that. If I could afford to have three expensive cinema lenses on these cameras, I would. If you're wondering why three lenses, that's because I shot with my f6 as well as a kind of reference. You'll see some footage from that in the next video. Before I can really shoot with these cameras, I need to get to know them a little bit better. Every camera has its own way of operating. Different brands operate in different ways. I've been following some Red Komodo Facebook groups for a few months to understand the camera a bit better, and I've watched some of Red's own videos on YouTube about how to shoot with and post-process the Komodo footage. I'll link those down below. And I've simply taken the cameras out and just started shooting with them. That's the best way to get to know any camera. I'll say right now that I like both of these cameras. They're both very capable and produce lovely images. I never like to tell somebody which camera I think they should buy. Buying cameras is a lot like buying a car. It's a very personal decision. I simply want to offer information which might help you in your decision-making process. I'm going to split this comparison into a couple of videos because otherwise I would never get it finished. In the following videos, I'll dig into the sensors, the menus, the resolutions, codecs, and I'll show off some more side-by-side -side footage. I'll cover low-light performance, global shutter versus rolling shutter, and talk about accessories. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified about my next videos. Thanks for joining me.